This week on The Siren, D&D 5 hits the top of the sales, an RPG for the digital age on Kickstarter, a fundraiser to help out a fellow gamer, spiky spiky dice, and I muse on the passing of one of my heroes. If you can believe ICV2's game rankings, then D&D is back as the number one selling RPG. It looks like people are embracing the 5th edition rules and more folk are being drawn into this hobby. The Dice Stormers recently ran a session with new players, which bore out the fact that this edition is a great vehicle for getting people into this amazing hobby. You'll see that game soon on the Dice Stormers channel. Meanwhile, check out the links below to see what was really an interesting chat about why we think a strong D&D is good for the hobby overall, whatever game you are loyal to. Kudos for Watsee for a well-executed launch, and we'll look forward to seeing what happens in coming quarters. In other D&D news this week, Wizards have announced our second feedback survey for people playing the game. You'll find a link for the survey below, but make sure you take a look at some of the information they picked up from the last survey. For example, that people were most dissatisfied with the Ranger class, and that only 10% of those surveyed had purchased the books but not played the game yet. Intriguing. This survey concentrates on the Eberron setting and delves into some of the other classes as well. Ultimum is an ambitious new RPG on Kickstarter, set in the distant future where the continents have reformed into a single landmass called Pangaea Ultima. Those that now live there survive on their wits and must form alliances as they encounter new species and strange alien threats. What makes this RPG ambitious is not its setting, but rather the way the creator, Christian Muckler, intends to implement it. His dream is for the game to have a strong online presence, with apps that encourage the community to help build the future of the game setting together. Not only does he want Ultiman to be the first true paperless RPG, but one that allows you to play anywhere, anytime, with anyone across the world, through your phone or tablet or computer. Is this the first RPG of the digital age? Check it out for yourself in the links below. Drive Through RPG, along with other publishers and game designers, have come together to support fellow gamer, game master, and game designer Christopher J. N. Banks. Christopher has experienced the greatest loss that a parent should never have to experience the loss of his five and a half year old daughter and only child. Drive Through and Co have created a charity drive to raise funds to cover medical expenses and to put together a proper tribute for little Persephone, the girl in the picture with the beautiful smile. To give your support, there's a $20 bundle on offer, which includes material from some of our favourite games, such as Cosmic Patrol or even Shadowrun 5th Edition. Follow the links below to support this worthy cause. On a happier note, it's safe to say the Dice Stormers are certainly not alone in our love of collecting dice, but every now and then a product comes along that really makes us sit up and notice. I present to you Thorn Dice from Ceramic Wombat. They're designed for stainless steel, but you can actually order them in a variety of materials and colours. Mr Wombat has a large variety of designs over at his website, and you should check them out if you're looking for that wow factor at the table. They're 3D printed and thus can achieve structures and forms that can't be made via traditional casting techniques. Ooh. Uh, head over to his site and take a look. And finally, one of my great heroes, Leonard Nimoy, passed away this week. A huge loss to the geek community, and in particular to the forthcoming Star Trek films. In response, my family spent the weekend trying to do things that would make this legend happy. We discovered, for example, you can get photos of the planets with a normal digital camera. My son has one with a super 300 times zoom, and he managed to get this photo of Jupiter with clearly visible moons. Wow! And this photo of the Earth's moon, which is obviously quite a lot closer. How cool is that? After our astronomical exploits, and having to explain the difference between astronomical and astrological, we retired to our home theatre and introduced the young ones to the joys of this film. If you haven't watched Voyage Home recently, which was directed by Nimoy, go and do it right now. You won't regret it. Thinking about Leonard's passing got me thinking about Star Trek and Star Trek RPGs. You know, I've never actually played one. Why? 
some people have suggested the military chain of command structure is a big problem for conversion of Star Trek stories to gaming tables. Which is a valid point. How do we all have equal fun if someone has to be captain and have ultimate power? But then, I reckon with a bit of creativity we could probably find a workaround for that one. So, what Star Trek RPGs have there been? Well, there's FASA's Star Trek The Role Playing Game, and The Last Unicorn Games did a version, and there's Prime Directive, which was launched in 1993. There are actually plenty to try, in fact. I wonder if Murray may have actually bought some of these already. Highly likely. Either way, it looks like the Dice Stormers will be bringing you a playthrough video of a Star Trek RPG very soon. As long as I get to be captain, I mean, I get to wear the pips and tell everyone what to do, right? Well, that's all for this week. It's been great to watch the reach of this little news program growing steadily, especially on Facebook, mostly. If you like this episode, then don't forget to tell at least one other person about it. Share, share, share. Now, come on, do it. After you've done it, uh, don't forget to email us at the siren at gmail when you've got something newsworthy. See you next week, and until then, may you... Live long and prosper.